last two videos, we have seen how we can use the wave equation to simulate waves in Unity. We have done this in two ways. We were using either CPU or GPU. In either case, we were creating a texture or a 2D, 2D array to uh, store the uh, status of a wave field. So the request from Michael Cross, I will show how how you can have the rippling effect to the neighboring objects uh, inside the unit scene. We can achieve this in a couple of different methods. What well, I'm thinking at the moment that um, we can use colliders uh, to detect if any object is in collusion with the water surface. And if that is so, then we can find the position of this object with respect to uh, the texture of the water, the wave field texture, and we can we can take the uh, floating point value of the wave, and then move the object according to this value. First of all, have a have a look. We have at the moment a plane which is attached to a mesh co uh, collider, a mesh filter. For a plane and uh, this is a sign of water layer and we have a script attached to this is the wave manager script which um, has the wave material uh, that's attached to this change this wave material and contains the texture the wave texture which stores the the height of the wave at any moment you can have a detailed look at the other parameters we have here in the uh, previous videos. Now let's have a look how our uh, waves are currently working. So you can see, actually it's probably good to zoom into our scene here first. Very good. Okay, now I can use my mouse and it will constantly uh, casts array, finds the position of the text position of the mouse uh, in texture coordinates and uh, applies a, a value, change the value of the, the uh, of the texture there. All right, there. Now what we are going to be doing, um, we don't need to do much change in the wave material script. We can keep this all clean in a different uh, script and even better in a different object now uh, but before we do that we want to make sure that we can access to our texture or we can um, get a, a we have a means to get the value the, the of the wave field from the outside of the wave manager what we're going to do we're going to create a function inside the wave manager that can actually help us access get a value from a, a particular position so what we're going to be doing is something that is very similar to what we already done uh, here what we did is the mouse position on the texture what which was getting the the position as a vector to int so we're going to be do, doing the same thing this time we're just going to be getting a value from the matrix so we're going to be doing public this is it has to be public because we want it to be accessible from outside so you know what public in this way we'll be getting is a float we want to get the float value at a particular position get wave value at now here mouse position on the texture uses the post position and the post position, we calculate the post position uh, automatically. What we want is to cast a ray from a particular position downwards where our object is going to be. And it's going to return the value at that position. So it's like here, it's casting a, a ray. In this case, it's from the screen, from the cursor. But in this case, we're going to casting from um, particular position vector 3 
uh, object position. And then this is similar. And if, if physics dot ray cost now instead of ray we can just use vector three origin direction so the origin the object position the object position can be above or below the water surface so um we won't be able to know uh, if we're going to cast upwards or downwards uh, so it's easier to um is easier to uh, keep the same x and y x and z values but um, start from a higher point uh, in the y-axis above the water and cast it downwards so it will be uh, below water and then object position dot Z. This is our start point, and next is going to be what was it? Direction. Direction is going to be upwards. So vector three dot up, which is on the y axis. So no matter what, if the if the object is under or above, we are going to get the wave value according to its x y plane. So. If we have this, we need the head, right? So we also need out hit info. There you go. Out hit. And finally, we can make sure that we are going to be covering only this water layer. So we can just keep uh, this layer. But for that, we need to have this layer, layer right? field, layer mask, water layer. We can also include this so that we can look into the water layer, into layer mask. Okay, we have to include the maximum distance. Let's call it 10. Actually, that won't be enough. Let's go with 20. And since we're starting from 10. Actually, we, we can just go 1 and 2. And then we're going to be uh, looking into um, layer mask. Oh, okay. So this should be on this side. Water layer. So if this is the case, then we're going. We want to get the value. So remember, we were getting the position here. So we can get this value, just like here, and then we can use that value to get you know, what, the value instead of changing it here. We were using. We were getting the position value. In here, not here, sorry, in the wave step, we were setting the position in here. So, what we're going to do, we're just using it to read. So, we're going to return. Hmm? Uh, Pause. Bad. Pause. Why? Let's post though. What is post is um, and that will be otherwise we don't want it to return anything. It could be return zero. Now since our plane is already have a layer of water. We are going to handle the bounces in a separate object 
which is going to have a trigger instead of collider. Now we're going to be creating, um, but we, we don't want our other objects to hit our water. So I'm going to first, um, in the project settings, I'm going to make sure the water has no collision with anything. I'm going to create uh, a cube, remove the mesh render, sorry. We are only interested in the collider itself. And the collider, we want the collider to have the same, same size with our water body. So, This is going to be something like this, and the bottom is going to be deep. So, you know, we can have the water deep. So, once I start, I expect this to go down. So, we can actually make this uh, go down even lower. So, something like this should be okay. So these values I want to keep and paste component values. So we're going to have, okay, so we have a box color. We have to note though, we don't want this layer to be water layer because we want this one to uh, interact with other uh, things um, through a trigger so we want this collider to be trigger and we want this layer to be it could be a default layer that's fine now once we would we have that you know the objects are going to inter uh, interact through the trigger so we need to create a new uh, script we can call it um, water body manager water weather manager I would like to put it into waves and let's call this water body manager now first of all it's going to have a private it's gonna it doesn't have to be private it's gonna have the wave manager i'd rather keep it serialized rather than make it public first of all once a body once an object gets inside this body is going to go through some changes one of them the biggest one is the drag it's going to have an extra drag so let's uh, include here serials field um, uh, call it uh, extra drag um, extra drag i can do something like 20. So it's going to be a huge drag because it's inside the water. And then we're going to manage this with on trigger enter exit. On trigger enter, the other object has always uh, attached rigid body. And the rigid body's uh, drag is we want it to increase by extra drag. This is only if the, the object has a attached rigid body. So let's make sure that we have that. So if other attached rigid body is not known, then we want to do this. And similarly, on trigger exit, we want to do the same thing. If other attached rigid body is not known, then the drag is oh, subtract the extra drag. So if it's zero, it's going to be 20. If it's one, it's going to be 21. And then once it gets out, it's going to go back. Now, everything we're going to do 
is it's going to be everything else is going to be not in the update we don't need these really we want to make sure that this is good so functions be called while it is while two objects are with each other so what we're going to be we're going to be using uh, on trigger stay and this is where we're going to be relying mostly and we're going to we need this is going to be, we're going to be for applying force so since we're going to apply force um, we are interested in anything that has a, a rigid body. So again, we're going to check for other that rigid body is not null. If that's not null, then we're going to see, we want to see something. Um, first of all, we can check the, the amount of wave, wave height. So plot wave height. Wave height. We're going to use the wave manager. Dot. Uh, we have the now get value at. Get value at is the public function so we can, so we can access and this transform uh, position or sorry not this transform position the, the collider the collider position so other dot now the, the collider has uh, something called bounds. And we can use the boundaries to check the center of the uh, object. So we're going to use bounds. So the collider, the other colliders bounds as the center. That's what we're interested. In. So at the center point, what is the value height? We're going to be getting that. And then, um, then we can, we can, we can, we can do something with it. We can move the object up and down by the amount of the wave height or we can apply a force depending on the wave height but before we do that we have to remember the force that will apply to object uh, it's going to be equal it's going to be a negative force on the opposite direction of the gravity the opposite direction of the gravity so we're going to be have uh, finds gravity times the density of the uh, liquid. We can just force gravity minus gravity density and it's placed volume. Now density is easy to handle. We can just create another serialized field and call it float uh, density. Okay, call well, it one for now. We can change it and uh, gravity. Actually, we can combine these two to simplify things. Density, uh, gravity have both of them in the same uh, together. So it's going to be 10. For now, we can change this. This depends on the particular situation. Uh, I can call it nice gravity. I didn't like the time stage. There's a different way of doing multiple. Oh, of course, X. X. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, next thing we're going to do, we're going to calculate this force and then apply. We can calculate the, it as vector tree uh, force. Our force is, or we can call it uh, uh, point force. I mistyped again. Point force is equal to the S times gravity times the displacement. Now that's the problem. Because how much of an object is displaced? How much of the object is inside a liquid? That's a that's hard to calculate. Now, what we can do, since we have the bound boundaries, uh, we can rely on this to have a rough estimate of the amount of the, uh, how much of the uh, object is inside the water and how much isn't. Now, to be able to have a rough estimation about how much of an object is inside the water, we need to calculate a vertical underwater distance. That's basically the distance 
uh, from the bottom edge of the object until the water level. We can simply calculate the distance from the center of the object to the water level by subtracting the height differences on the y-axis. However, this difference could be negative if the object is completely outside or it could be bigger than the diameter of the object. So we can add the radius and limit this value between zero and the diameter. So what we're going to be doing, we're gonna um, do the, we're gonna take uh, manager transform position y times um, the wave height. Here we can have another multiplier to help us what as it's a wave force multiplier. For now, we can use one. This is our addition that the, the wave addition that depends on the height of the wave minus the position of the object bounds minus center. However, this value could be um, center dot one. No, or this could this value, you know, the object can be well below, well completely sunken in, or completely outside the water, and then there we have a problem. We have to uh, clamp this value between the diameter and zero. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to do that by not clamp this value. It's going to clamp between between zero and the diameter to have the to get the diameter we can use the bounds dot extent and we are interested in the y-axis so we're going to use the y-axis this is this returns the radius and to get the diameter we just multiply by two this really tells us how much vertically is an object sunken inside the water. However, what we're interested in, we are going to uh, convert this into a ratio by dividing the maximum value, which is, again, two times the bounds extent y. And it will tell us the ratio of the object that is uh, sunken. And by multiplying this value by the volume of the bounding box or the bounds, we can get um, a rough estimation of the volume that we are we have displaced. Okay, let's create a new variable called displacement ratio so that we can put this ratio in that under that variable to keep things tidy. Now what we need to do, we have to multiply density gravity with displacement ratio and we're going to multiply that with volume and the upwards vector since the, the, the force is upward. Now we also need to calculate the volume of course the volume of the, the the total volume of the object which is not an easy task to calculate however we had a good estimation or we can have a good estimation if we assume that the volume does not exceed the boundaries the, of the collider so to do that um, we can simply multiply the extents of the bounds since each extent is only halfway, we'll have to multiply by 8, and that gives the volume of the bounding box.
Now we need have to calculate the total displaced volume uh, by multiplying the displacement ratio with the volume. And then we multiply. Now the next thing we need to do is just simply apply the force and let's just pretty straightforward order attached rigid body dot add force present force and we're gonna have the uh, buoyant force one I can write it down here buoyant force um uh, maybe force mode impulse so it will apply on new Now we can simplify even more by taking this part, which is the height of the wave, into a separate variable. Water surface height. And that's going to be this value. Water surface height minus the object uh, center i think we forgot to add the bounce extent according to my math and once we clamp it between the zero and the two times the extent then we want that by the two times the extents to get a ratio. In this way, our value displacement ratio is going to be varying between zero and one. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And then we use a total displacement. Oh my god, this is the problem. <laughs> Let me use it. <laughs> okay, that's the problem. Thanks. Now we should have the water manager here. We're going to have to attach the water manager here. And we have false multipliers. And yeah, see, it's working. Everything seems fine for now, except the mouse doesn't register anything that is because i have to i think we have the water there and then set correctly okay let's try again oh it doesn't see, doesn't seem to be working again i decided to uh, make sure that we are casting only to the water layer because and if our water body is actually receiving it, it will not allow our text coordinates to be calculated. We have to enter a distance. Uh, I guess 10 will be enough. It should be working now. Let's see how it's going to happen. So we have this buoyancy. There you go. And now if I wave around it is should be affecting the the, the the layer height it doesn't seem to be affecting anything inside get wave value at function we were ray casting it's starting from down and it goes to upwards uh, by two i think the problem is that um our mesh collider we are using a mesh collider and the mesh collider is recognizing collisions from only one direction so it's trying to recognize casting from bottom to up so if we were to change this direction from top to bottom i think then we won't be able to have uh, this problem okay so let's start now we have the density gravity we can change 
uh, we have a force multiplier where we can play around and yeah once we it seems like we find a good balance at 0 0.4 and 100 now i can see subtle movements of the ball up and down let's make them permanent And here you can see them from a different angle. I think this is a good way of making boats go up and down with the waves. I hope this was beneficial and I'm looking forward to seeing your projects using waves. Thank you for your comments and uh, I'll be starting a tutorial series on making uh, turn-based strategy games. And it will be fun. So hope to see you there.